me. The knowledge I'm about to drop, they knew. They already knew. They already knew what type of time it was. All right, so just a little introduction. Um, my name is Ariana Angel. Um, I love teaching about the womb. I love helping and assisting women especially, but all beings towards this information. Um, uh, how is everybody being today? How is everybody feeling today? Are you guys ready to learn? Um, I do. Just because of all that as well, I want to set the tone and set the intention and energy for this call today. So I'm going to have us do a one minute meditation prior. So, whoo, all right. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I call in being, beings of oneness and love. I call in the highest of the high. I call in all of our spirit guides, all of our higher selves to enter the room today. Only beings of oneness and love can come in our sacred space today. I set the intention that everybody is present, open to receiving knowledge, and takes it in with the, with the intention of applying it and experiencing sprouting and sprouting and sprouting. Thank you all for being here. I think that was a minute. I, I won't time it, but <laughs> all right. So I actually have a slideshow, but all honesty, after all that and the time it just took, I think it might just be best that I just read it to you guys rather than trying to figure that out because we're already 20 minutes behind. So boom wisdom, boom wisdom. Y'all can let me know um, what y'all think in the chat of, you know, what, what, what do, you, what do you really think um, our womb is all about? But first is first, I want to say, who would this class benefit? Everybody. Everybody. Uh, reason being, we all have mothers. We all have sisters. We have, some of us have daughters. We have cousins, um, aunts, all of these goddesses that are highly respected and love. And feminine energy is not just in women. It lies when, within all of us. So men learning about this information and this energy will only help them balance their own and strive more for themselves. So with that being said, learning about the divine feminine energy as well as womb wisdom has a um gains a stronger awareness for unions to work in harmony and also for women to start being able to express their womb without getting shamed or sexualized, you know? It will allow for deeper compassion as well, a lot more deeper compassion and connections in every aspect, all right? Every aspect. So why is womb healing so important. Um, I could say many reasons why, but for one, it has everything to do with us being aligned with our higher self and in our purpose because we must become one with all, all, not just what's around us, but within ourselves. We must get to know and love every single body part. And for a woman, your womb, this is where everything is held. Your intuition stems from your womb. Like the womb healing is the most crucial and important thing to do. So uh, with that being said, it allows you to merge with your higher self, which all of us strive to do every day. You wouldn't be on this call if you weren't striving to do so. So it allows you to let go of traumas and clear blockages because the only reason we're not, you know, doing all the things we want to do at times or we're experiencing things, maybe even as deep as depression and stuff is because of these traumas. These traumas are holding us back energetically and they need to flow. They need to go. So <laughs> we're going to talk about how it um, trauma, it helps with traumas. We're also going to talk about how it dives into a deeper connection with your feminine energy. And this is big because we have a lot of women operating in hyper masculine energy right now. So it, it's, it's getting better. Like I said, this knowledge is being spread. You know, we're, we're doing the thing. But a lot of women aren't really in touch with that divine feminine energy. So we're going to bring that back up. We are also going to go over how it has um, allows you to have a deeper wisdom and intuitive skills, which is everything because being a fraction of source, we have that source energy within us. And that source energy lies in our intuition. And this is not just for the goddesses. This is for the gods on this call as well. Sources, the voice you so can say is in your intuition. Your intuition is everything. Like I like to say your intuition is the compass. We already have the GPS system that knows exactly where we need to go. All right, we're, we're smarter than Apple Maps and all these things. These are nothing but reflections of us. And that intuition, that's your comfort. I know y'all saw that. The energy is too high. Y'all, all right. <laughs> Anyways, that just, wow. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, y'all a little goofball. We're going to have fun in this call. I'm not going to be like, do this. Y'all don't feel me. So, all right. <laughs> Most sacred part of the woman's body. Once again, the most sacred part. All life comes from a womb. All life comes from a womb. All life comes from a womb. This is the most sacred spot. This is the most powerful energy center 
as well. But I'm not going to discredit the gut and the brain and the heart. All right, all right. The heart and the gut up there too, but the womb. All right, so for the goddesses on here, how to know if there is disconnection, fibroids, cysts, endometriosis, um, blood clots, painful and irregular menstrual cycles, okay? Um, infertility, missing periods altogether. So if you're going months and you know, where's my period? Oh, it didn't come. And then it comes on the first of the month, but the last two months ago, it came on the end. This is a telltale sign, okay? Uh, missing periods, like I said, feeling of disconnection and depression. So mo like when you're depressed, it's really your soul calling for your attention, your soul. You're not in touch and tune with your soul in the way that allows you to guide through earth in a flowing state. OK, when you're in tune, when you're tapped in and tuned on with your soul, you're allowed to go through life way more easier. You're not fighting yourself. OK, that's the biggest problem that people face in depression. Like they're against themselves. Their biggest enemy is themselves. We're going to change that whole dynamic, like I said. <laughs> All right. And last to last, this connection to Earth. We are in Mother Gaia's womb, okay? So Mother Gaia is our direct reflection. Now, men and women have this connection. But women, y'all, come on. We have wombs. All right? We have wombs. So getting in nature and connecting is crucial. Like, this is something, no excuses, we should be doing every day. Every single day, no matter what. Gaia has been asking me to ask people and, like, spread the knowledge of, like, we need to connect. We need to connect with her. Like, she she's, she needs it. Even if you're laying down in bed reading a book, you know, you could simply just go lay in the grass, okay? Uh, catch the coast, uh, the coast from the sun. Like, I want you to observe animals. Animals, if you look even at the zoos and stuff, they're laying out in the sun. Like, they take that resting time seriously. And we need to be doing the same. So connecting to Gaia is connecting to your womb. And I want you guys to get this through your head. Okay, so the truth to your being. Y'all, I got a whole slideshow. Next time, though. We're going we to get it on next time. Um, okay, so the truth to your being. So the state of a womb reflects all life everywhere. Everywhere. So let's get deep into this. So many women, y'all. So many women. And I was one of them at a time, okay? So it's so easy to say, he ain't shit like he he nothing but a cheater he ain't nothing but a bum like yeah he he he, he stink like whatever whatever you want to say all right whatever you want to say y'all let's just take a minute and think about it where does that man come from <laughs> a mother a goddess that has a womb even our fathers for the for the goddesses and the gods on here that have had father wounds that man was raised by a woman okay so as women all together, if us women were connecting more, if we were all in touch with this womb wisdom, okay, if we were guiding and making decisions from our heart and our womb, then as the collective, right, it wouldn't be so much in the position of what it's in. Many people even in the streets, right, men that have found a trap in a loop, staying stuck in street activity, that's really deep down like feminine energy. It, it often comes from other wounds. It comes from these father wounds. It all really comes down to inner child healing, which is why I push for this so much. But that's a whole different call. We're not getting into that this much this call. This is womb wisdom. But it's all interconnected. So it's bound to get brought up. You know what I'm saying? This is all big one thing. It's all interconnected. And it all has everything to do with each other. Honestly, this is why I say on earth right now okay i'm not gonna say everywhere because not at all but on earth right now a lot of divine feminines have not a lot of goddesses have not been able to fully step into their power and remember who they are they have not yet remembered that their womb is the portal to the <laughs> come on the cosmos like so you know when you don't know that you're not walking around with like the confidence and as much as you really could so this is why on earth right now there is a lot of destruction and there is a lot of violence you know every single being that is acting destructive or what people like to call dark right it's a lack of love and the only way to heal all diseases all trauma all wars all disagreements all is just with love it's love and that's point blank period you don't have to agree with what they're doing with the actions that were done you don't have to whatever but the only way to res resolve all of this is love okay and like I said, the woman most of the time is setting the, the household for the tone for the household. Everyone, you know, like it, the kids, your kids are a direct reflection of you. OK, your husband, the, the state that he's in, what energy are you putting out? So this is all stuff to think about. Like it really does start with us. We have a lot of power and it's time to really utilize it in our best way and not use it in manipulative 
purposes, which a lot of goddesses have been doing. So, like I said, the state of a room of a womb reflects life everywhere. Okay, the more that we can connect with each other and spread this womb wisdom and share it together, womb circles, which you know we all gonna be tapped into the womb circles in person soon. I don't know, Nick, but talk with us. So, you have a temple. Your connection to the non-physical and intuition is deep. And this is this is big. We need to start looking at our bodies as a temple, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, guys and goddesses. Your source power is residing right here, all in here, okay? So putting junk into it. Would you throw junk onto a temple? You would not bear to do that or disrespect it like that. You show respect to it, okay? Like, we need to be very intentional about what we're speaking to ourselves, what, what we are thinking about and to ourselves, what we are putting into it, okay? Like, this is really, when you when you really start showing love and, like, really pouring into your temple, into your soul, into your mind, into your heart, all these things, life will sprout. So, um, your natural state of health is perfection. There's no disease that is not mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, Okay. There is no disease that doesn't stem from these things. We are made in God's perfection. It says this in the Bibles, religious texts, and it's something that we just let go of our head. But this is really some real facts right here. We are made in God's perfection. So anytime you're operating in a state, experiencing some type of disease or um, disconnection with yourself, anytime you're experiencing anything that you perceive to be not perfect, right, even allergies down to this, like, we're made in God's perfection and we deserve and we are going to and we are living in that blissful state. All right, y'all. So when you can get the mental, the physical, the emotional, you can get all that baggage together. Then your um, disease, all that dis-ease, because that's all it is, dis-ease, all that poo -poo masculine and feminine energy. I'm sure you guys already have a great understanding of this, you know, but I'm just going to go over this real quick little bit just to get it intact. Okay. So feminine energy, this has more to do with um, stronger in tune spiritually. Not to say men aren't, aren't in tune with their spirituality because they are, but you get what I'm saying, okay? So feminine energy is dealing with emotions and nourishment. And that's what I just said, actually. Men have the divine feminine energy, okay? We both have both. This is the yin and yang. This is the perfect balance. So when you're even like, you could say meditating, it's technically working with your feminine energy to a sense because you're getting in tune spiritually, you know, with spirit. But so it deals with emotions. It deals with nourishment. It's the basis of life. A woman is the manifestation and physical form of the universe of nature. The physical form. My goddesses, if y'all are not getting up out of your chairs and feeling the love, I need you to do it now because I'm here to tell you you are worth it. You are worth the world. And we are tapping back into this, y'all. All right, so feminine energy, highly emotional, empathic, and creative, okay? This is where all this is stemming from. So if you are experiencing a lack in creativity or you're not in touch with your emotions, you feel like you're cold-hearted, it's hard for you to cry, um, empathic, you know, you're in, I like to call it bitch mode. Like, you don't care about how others feel because it's all about you. It's all bitch mode. All right, this is not being in tune with your feminine energy. So masculine energy, let's get into it. Masculine energy is do, 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 do. We like to get shit done. Like, like, like we're not going, woman, we like to cry about it. We like to complain about it. We like to talk about it. We're highly emotional, okay? So sometimes women, we just want to, we just want to vent. Men are like, eh, all right, the masculine energy, like, eh, I'm not so much with that. I'm going to just get, I'm going to just get to the, uh, the root of it. Like, you know, I'm going to just get us all get the problem done. That's the balance. Okay. So masculine energy is more active. The energy is more towards the physical than the spiritual. Do, do, do. Manifest, manifest, manifest. If that makes sense. All right. More logical and ambition with the masculine energy. So if anyone has any questions, just drop them down below. I'll try and get to them while I'm going, but I'm hyped. I'm hyped. <laughs> okay. So this is a big one. Matter of fact, I'm getting my notes ready y'all because this is really going to be this is where we pull out the notepads, all right? Especially for my goddesses. I need the notepads pulled out right now because we're about to dive very deep into feminine hygiene products and period, which is has everything, everything to do with why a lot of us are, you know, out of touch, out of alignment with our uh, divine feminine energy with our womb right now. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get my notes out. I got y'all. I don't came prepared. I don't play about y'all. I don't play by my tribe. I think about me. <laughs> I'm going to make y'all time worth it. So I'll be fighting tears sometimes. Y'all, it ain't nothing to fight. I want to tell you right now, tearing is the most divine thing ever. Like, everyone cries. Everyone. And it's it's release. 
it is one of the best ways that you can release. So cry. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're doing. And to be honest, right, a lot of people are scared to cry in front of other people. And especially for the gods on this call. You know, I, I know a lot of y'all got told from a young age, like, stop crying like a little girl, like, man up. No, 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 no. That's programming that needs to get put away. No. Okay. Nobody's judging you. Like, we all cry. Like I said, it's very, honestly, it shows when a man cries that he's very much in tune. He's in tune with his emotions. And that's the type of guys that you need to be with, baby girl. That is the type of guys that you need to be with. You don't want a man that that he don't even know how to express himself. How he going? How he going to handle all our, how how he going to handle your emotions? And he can't even get a grasp of his own. So this is important. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Feminine hygiene products and period reviews. All right, so tampons, y'all. We should not be using tampons, and this is like a. Ooh, so I know, I know. Some of us goddesses, we got a heavy flow. I know because I was one. I was one. All right, baby. Um, I had to have a tampon on and in on whatever. I had to have it in at all times or it was a mess. You know, we're going to get into it. But I just want y'all to look at nature for a second, right? Nature is our biggest teacher. And being that nature is a reflection of us, nature is the best thing to follow. All right. So when it rains outside, is there something blocking the rain from, you know, coming down? No. That rain is coming down. So if you even think about it in that dynamic, like, then we can even put it into like this, right? Y'all, if y'all had to take a poop, imagine if somebody was like, nah, you need to put this up. Come on now. Come on now. Like, when you can put it like this, it's like, oh, maybe they are unnatural. Tampons, our ancestors, wait, 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 wait back then. I'm a baby girl. They was not losing tampons. Free bleeding, all right? They were free bleeding. It is important to let your blood low and honestly when we get into the tampons we're gonna see that the stuff that's in the tampons is directly linked to things like endometriosis pcos fibroids all these things are no coincidence okay no coincidence and hey if you're if you got it in right now you know if you just have a box at home that you're waiting for it's okay you know it's it, it's a gradual process so take all this information in write it down meditate on it okay it's okay we're gonna we're getting to the bottom of this okay so all right so with tampons right well actually this is about pads um yeah i may i mainly took uh notes on pads but i can i, I can still go on the tampons so with the tampons right even the organic i'm gonna be honest with you even the organic ones have so many chemicals in it like this even goes into the food. Like, if the food, the food should be the ingredient itself. Like, and any other stuff added to it, all those chemicals, it's like, mm. it's just, like I said, if you put a tampon in one time, those chemicals aren't, oh, endometriosis right there. And then, no, it's a gradual buildup of these chemicals. And we must realize that the chemicals aren't just coming from the feminine products, they are coming from everywhere, okay? from the food they're coming from the air they're coming from the clothing that we put on um even women like with yoga right even the tight lululemon all these things there's studies showing that these all have foramic forever chemicals and if you think about the dynamic of it you're sweating as you're doing these practices right and that's directly on your skin you can barely even pull off um like the pants sticking to you so these chemicals like i said it's an overload okay this is why we want to minimize as much chemicals as we can and avoid as many as we can. We're going to be letting the tampons go because for one, it's just not allowing you to flow. Uh, it can definitely cause more blood clotting within you. Okay. And like I said, these chemicals, these chemicals, baby, these chemicals got to go. They got to go. They got to go. Okay. So let's talk about the um, majority of pads are toxic and y'all, let me tell you something. So I used to use the honey pot and I used to think I was doing something <laughs> So let's put it, let's let's break this down, right? Honey pot is organic, okay? That doesn't mean it's healthy. Just because something is labeled as organic does not mean it's healthy. And looks can be deceiving, okay? Looks can be extremely deceiving, especially when it says organic. They know what we're trying to do, okay? They know that we are trying to move into a more healthier, holistic lifestyle. People are catching up with the trends, okay? So even the organic things, you still need to be cleaning them, especially when it comes to fruit and stuff like that. But just because it says organic doesn't mean not chemical free, okay? So as women, these pads are a big, big, big problem. So Always is the first brand that many of us get introduced to uh, when we first get our periods, you know? 
our mothers hand us, whoever it may be, they hand us a, a box of the pads. Most of the time, it's going to be always. Always it's going to be the pads that you see at many restaurants, you know, places that even give pads. So always pads. They come with a sticker on the front, and the sides are open, right? And that open part has access to the pad. Once it's open, it's unsanitary. And most of us just stick a pad in our purse, you know, and wait for the time to come. But it's already, it's already getting crunkled. It's already getting opened. And so it's already absorbing things onto the pad, right? Your pad is going directly onto your womb. And our womb is the most sensitive area. Our womb picks up everything, okay? This is the most sensitive area on our body, on our bodies okay this is why the feminine hygiene products aka pads and tampons all of them but pads and tampons are the most crucial because we are working directly with the clitoris we are working directly with the lips we are working directly with it okay so um these pads have to stay open due to the chemicals it contains this is why they're not even sealed shut all the way and you'll notice this ladies um pick up your pads if you still have some and, and you'll you can observe them and you're like whoa these chemicals are so strong that they can't even stay. They can't even stay like that. Okay. And even with the honey pot, that's what I was saying. You know, sometimes I go this way with a thought that it was this way. I apologize. But with honey pot, right? You can open it and you can smell it. And that's a telltale sign. The fragrance, y'all. The fragrance is so strong. And the programming goes deep around this because we are taught to think, oh, it smells good. It's good for us. No, no, no. And I know we all want to smell good, okay? But let me just break it down like this. When you have a clean temple and when you are actually, you know, consistent in a healthy diet and fasting and water and all these things, you're not going to stink the way you do that, the, the way you do now, okay? Prior to making all these changes, I stunk. Like, my armpits, oh, girl, when I sweat, I stunk. I kid you not. As soon as I was actually consistent with the diet changes and all these things, yo, I was in Mexico, Yucatan, and that's like one of the hottest places in Mexico. The weather is 93 daily. I was outside every day dripping sweat. None of it smelled. And I, I'm able to now use my deodorant as just key limes if needed. You know, I know that I ate something I shouldn't have ate if I have bodily odor. So women, men, we're not even supposed to be stinking the way they do, the way that we do, okay? Deodorant and cologne and all these things, they're literally meant to cover up the smell that's not supposed to be Get out, okay? And I'm not saying like, yeah, scratch deodorant and, and cologne and all this stuff, but I'm going to be honest, even the cologne and the perfume, it's all just toxic chemicals you're ingesting in. And over time, it accumulates, it adds up. So we have to be more mindful. You know, essential oils is a great switch. You can make beautiful essential oil perfumes to a sense, okay? It might not be the same, but when you're switching your lifestyle, you know there's going to be some essential um, switches, okay? So if you honestly have body odor, this is something that you could be reflecting on. You know, what am I eating, okay? That's the biggest telltale sign that something's going off. I need a detox. I need a detox. I need a detox, okay? Once I did, like, very long fruit detox, uh, detoxes, juice detoxes, I fasted, odor, gone gone okay so i'm gonna be holding some group detoxes and all these things pretty soon so i got some stuff coming for y'all that we can all do these things together because i know it is a gradual process and it takes time it takes dedication it takes um people encouraging you around you it's some big gradual shifts we're taking okay and i want you to think of it like this when there's a mess in your kitchen right and you grab the um you grab the wipe you grab the paper towel whatever you're cleaning first square clean once you wipe it you know you look at the bottom and you see all the dirt you see all that that's what happens when you're cleaning your body and not even just when you're cleaning your body, when you're healing, okay? When you start putting light on all the dark, what you're doing, guess what? You're purging. It has to come out. And this is why a lot of people, even when they start like the, the journey of ascension, right? Or changing their diets, they experience purging. It could be throwing up. It could be days sitting in your bed just down. It could be whatever. You have to purge these emotions. The only reason they're there in the first place is because you didn't sit with them to begin with. And my paper flew. <laughs> we got to purge these temples, all right? We got to purge these temples. With the always pads, right? It's not even just always, but like I said, this is a main popular brand. Um, It's a synthetic around plastic mix top. So that's the part that's touching your body. And this is why many women will even experience rashes and discomfort. Pads used to literally drive me crazy, okay? 
drive me crazy and and it's, it's it's funny how when you're not really in tune with yourself you're not able to listen to your body because your body is always speaking to you any discomfort is trying to tell you it's trying to teach you it's our jobs to assist our temples okay we have a literally non-stop 24 7 janitor okay <laughs> literally so plastic come on y'all don't want like we're even getting past drinking out of plastic so plastic on our wounds we have to watch out for this. So the flow typically is going to be anywhere from 15 to 50 mil, uh, milliliters a day. But I will say this differentiates because when you get on the path of more, um, my, I myself am on the path of breathitarianism. So that is being free from food. Okay. So as you get deeper into things like that, eventually your period will transcend completely. But so that's why I said it, it differentiates, but typically, okay, that's just typically, okay? A lot of store pads inside are made from recycled garbage, and I am not making this stuff up, y'all. They are made from recycled garbage. The reason why they are white is to, it's bleach, okay? It's bleach to cover that, to cover, okay? So they take paper products out of land fields, okay? They take paper products out of land fields and they put them in a shredder. After shredding down the chemicals, like chlorine, like chlorine, to make it the fluffy white look that I was just talking about. When we see white, what do we think? We think it's clean, okay? That's automatic. We see white and we think holy. We think purify. So this is why pads are white, okay? Like the mind combining that goes into all this, like it's it's smart. It's like, damn, y'all knew what y'all were doing. So uh, when we put it onto our body, it brings in moisture, okay? And I want you to think, woman, goddesses, <laughs> woman, goddesses, goddesses. When you're on your period, down there, it's already very moist, okay? Come on, we're, we're purging out blood. So it's already very moist at this time. And your hormones as well. You know, at this time, some of us want to get it on. <laughs> so we're already voiced. So this is why it's the perfect place for destruction when you put these chemicals on because it's absorbing them even more, okay? Even quicker. So that's literally how you activate chemicals, science 101. But um, time, temperature, and moisture equals this um it's the moisture from your cycle the time it lasts and the body heat so paper does not absorb well in pad um the first layer of the pad i wish i had a pad to show you guys next call the first layer of the pad right it's nothing but synthetic fibers okay write this down ladies it's synthetic fiber the blue edge you know like the little small blue edge that you see so this blue edge is blue dye. So we already have learned so far, being in the Discord, through all the different teachers, right? Dye is something we're staying away from in food. You know, food dye. So when it comes to our wounds, once again, which takes in the most, you can see how it's not a good idea to put dye on your wound. Blue dye. It's, it's yeah. So, <laughs> um... That gets into the bloodstream. And like I said, our blood is sacred. Our blood is very much sacred. Everything in us is sacred. Not even to separate anything, but everything is sacred. So, um, also, the pads have no cotton, y'all. They have no cotton. They're just made to look like they have cotton. And I don't want y'all to worry because I have a direct link and source for you guys to get all natural pads if that's what you desire to. I have tested this brand out myself. I love it. Um, I now free bleed, so I don't use them anymore. But I can say I approve of every single ingredient, all the stuff in the pads and beautiful brand. Okay. So I'm going to drop that down below for you guys once we get to the end of the call. So no need to cry. No need to worry. Mama already right, gotcha. Okay. So uh, example, 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 dioxins, right? And um, the furans. Okay. These are byproducts of chlorine bleaching that gives confent that get we're gonna start over <laughs> so they are byproducts of chlorine bleaching that gives conventional feminine feminine care products like pads and tampons the white look so that's the ex exact chemical breakdown for you let me know if that's too loud and i can move inside by the way so let me know in the comments um okay so as byproducts right they often remain in material fibers a is stopping no, it didn't. All right, so all right, as byproducts, they often remain in material fibers. This is a carcinogen, okay? This is a carcinogen. If y'all don't know what that is, this is the things that direct link that, that link directly to cancer, okay? Carcinogens link directly to cancer. Uh, these are even found in the organic ones, like I said, okay? 
We're not putting trash on Yonis anymore, y'all. This is sacred sisterhood that we're talking about, okay? We have to respect our Yonis. Just like we wouldn't put trash up here, we shouldn't put trash down there. We shouldn't put trash in here either or in here. So, and you know what the wild part is? The FDA says it's in the environment in food. So they approve it. The FDA approves of these things, y'all. So, of course, it does not have label signs on it and warning signs. And I want to try to look this up because there are countries that have banned always pads, okay? Like, this is ridiculous. So, the inside of our vagina, it has mucous membrane cells, okay? And these are the most sensitive cells and absorb the easiest. They can store all of this stuff for 7 to 10 years. Our mucous membranes can store, store these things up for 7 to 10 years. But with fasting, you know, with intentional detoxing, we can shorten that time down, okay? There's no one, one size fits all. So it, it's, it's, it's a gradual process of letting it go, letting it flow, okay? So um, as well, right, these membranes can also be passed on to children and transmitted through sex. And I'm not talking about, oh, STD. No, I'm just talking about the chemicals, Okay. So even for the gods on here, we need to be encouraging our goddesses to be putting these pads on because you're picking up these same chemicals as well. Um, construction lid glue is what sticks to the panties. You know how you have to even stick the pad on to the top of the panty? You know, it sticks. That's glue. And once again, I don't think any of us would ever in our right mind grab a stick of glue and just start putting it on our womb. So we need to be treating it in the same way, okay? Also... It doesn't matter if you wash the panties. That glue is so strong that even through a couple of wa- it might take a couple washes for the glue to even be fully out. And think of it like this. You might have period underwear specifically for your period, right? But some people don't. So some people are using the same underwear on days that they don't have their period um, on days that they do. And so that pad is leaving behind that residue. And so when you're not on your period, it's even closer to your vagina. Okay, let me know if that's too loud, y'all. All All right, so they take out the trash. They put it in a plastic bag outside of the pad. Irony. Organic materials are wrapped in plastic. Um, Okay, it's a breeding ground for bacteria. Bacteria. And um, bacteria, like I said, carries toxins. So we need to get away from the bacteria and the toxins. Um, Like I said. Oh, fun fact. So a lot of women, and this is actually, I experienced just working with women and studying and going through, you know, a lot of different social media just to see women's opinions on so I can gain a better understanding of how to help you guys better. Um, a lot of women are very insecure about the smell of the of their vagina, the odor. And a lot of women have maybe even experienced people that have said something about it. And that can take a big toll on a woman's self-esteem, you know, being told something like that, even on a guy. So once again, the reason we smell that fishy smell is literally because of these feminine products and also diet. Like I said, when you start to clean your temple, um, you're really not going to have a lot of body odor anymore. But that's where that fishy smell comes from. It's all these toxins and it's all this bacteria. So that's something you're struggling with. That's, that's a telltale sign. Okay. Um, on top of this as well. Um, yeah. So I think that was enough on the pads. Because <laughs> we got a lot to get in this call. So I'm actually going to keep going um, with what else we have. So... But if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. I promise we'll get to them. I promise we'll get to them. I'm going to open the call up for everyone to come speak at the end as well. So let's tap into our blood now, okay? Our blood is sacred. And this is also something that has been very, very, very disrespected. Very disrespected. I remember being in school, and I'm sure I have goddesses on the call that's experienced this. I remember being in school one day, and... I didn't know my period was starting and I bled on the seat and boys are literally like, ew, like the grossest thing ever. And that will will take a toll on you. Okay. That will take a toll on you. Cause for one, it's like women, right? I know when I first um, grew up and I first started getting a period and stuff, it was something I very much resented. I always looked at it like, why do I have to have a period? Why don't men have it? You know, why is there blood coming from me? Like it honestly kind of even scared me at first. And I didn't know the divinity of my blood. So our ancestors, y'all, our ancestors had ceremonies around this blood, okay? They were respecting this blood. They were putting it on their face. They were giving it to the plants so the plants could help grow faster, even to build a connection with Mother Gaia on a deeper level. Our blood is sacred, okay? Anything that comes from us is sacred. So to even look at your period or your pee as nasty, it's not loving yourself to the deepest and the fullest potential that one could. So um, we need to start utilizing our blood. And that might be a big, you know block for you 
because this sounds very new, but this is how you can really connect with your divine feminine energy, okay? Our blood is sacred, and it's time to look at it as that. You shouldn't be scared to get a little bit on your finger when you're wiping, okay? So, like I said, for centuries, it was used to represent feminine strength, okay? Um, it has the power to destroy enemies. On top of that, um, like I said, there were ceremonies, and this time was spent on our menstrual cycles for straight honoring this, okay? It was very honored, and we're going to honor it again, okay? <laughs> so, um, like I said, in doing so, you're just honoring yourself. It's a, and it's a deeper aspect of yourself. So periods are not supposed to be painful. And this is the biggest thing that goddesses struggle with. Our menstrual comes and we are in bed, cramps on 100. We want ice cream. You know, we're just curled up in a ball. We want someone to come take care of us. And truth be told, our periods are not supposed to be painful, y'all. They're not. Your period being painful is a direct sign that you're not in alignment with your highest self. It's time to get in one. It's time to make union with our higher self. It's time to go on that twin flame journey with ourselves. That's the biggest thing. People always tell me, I want my twin flame, masculine, feminine within yourself. Okay? You can't get anything, like, truly that's really going to be the direct reflection, that, that connection you're craving. It won't come until you've gone on the journey with yourself. So I know I couldn't have never attracted my counterpart if I didn't take this things, all of these things seriously, okay? I was able to find my union through doing these things, through dating myself, through having this relationship with myself, through literally connecting to every aspect, my blood, all of these things, okay? And doing these things, you're also going to attract the uh, divine masculine who's going to respect these things, who's going to honor your blood, okay? Periods are not supposed to be painful at all. This is a time for rest. I take my period very seriously. It's very rare that I go out on my period. I don't care if I had plans. I don't care what it is. Guess what? Source is calling. And what is more important than connecting with source? Nothing. Okay? In order for you to show up and be the best version of yourself in all that you do, you have to pour into your cup and you have to be the best version of yourself. Our hormones are fluctuating. Women go through four cycles in a month, okay? Uh, men is a little different so our, or our hormones are very much fluctuating a lot but this time you have to think about it think about how much energy our body is utilizing for this blood to even come out it's a lot a lot this is why you are tired and there's nothing wrong with being tired you know we live in a very hyper masculine society so us women we want to hustle 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 we want to do 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 we forgot that we have the power from the non-physical and we have a very intimate close connection through our intuition we can be manifesting things. We don't have to hustle. And that's a big one to break, y'all. It is. Because money is the source that's used on this realm right now for everything. And, you know, we want it. We want it. We want it. But hustling is not the way. And tapping into your divine feminine energy and utilizing this aspect is how you can get it faster, faster, faster. Time. What is time? Come on. Like, come on. It's just getting it more of a flowing state. We can be flowing through these things. All right? So this is a time for rest. And if people around you don't get that, they don't have to get it, okay? Tell somebody, I am on my menstrual cycle right now. No, I cannot clean right now. I'm sorry. I cannot do the chores right now. I'm taking this time to myself. I will get to it when I can. I will get to it in two or three days when it's over, okay? I'm drinking my herbal tea. I'm drinking my cacao tea. I am in bed. I am meditating. I am reflecting. And I am connecting to the source that is within because I am most in tune at this time. So I'm going to utilize this energy in my best interest and in yours. I don't care, y'all. I don't care if you got to call up the job. Do it. There's nothing more important than yourself. And you need to start embodying this. Rest, rest, rest. Go within. Connect. All right? A womb in tune. A womb in tune will experience a liberating peaceful time on their mens, on their menstrual cycle. And I can tell you through experience, my period was given to me at a very young age because of the toxic foods and my hormones at the time. So I experienced very bad, bloody periods, heavy. I'm talking about seven days, maybe even more. I had to have the super plus tampon in. I had to have a pad underneath. You know, I, I, I didn't even like going to sleep at night because how many times I had to wake up and I had to change it. Like, I've been through the mud of the mud. I had dipped into the trenches when it came into that womb pain, y'all. I feel you 100%. And I am here to help you. And I have compassion for you. I'm speaking all off of experience, okay? This is a journey. 
and this is a journey we are taking together as a sisterhood. Your periods, like I said, they shouldn't be painful. Um, making changes within myself. I went from seven day period, very heavy, very painful to two days. And my intuition is so strong that I, like I said, I don't need to wear pads. I don't need to wear tampons because my intuition tells me, oh, get up. You're about to bleed. It's time to get the cup. Come on, we got to get our blood. Like my intuition knows. And this is the power that we all have. This is something we can all tap into, y'all, okay? And it's what we're doing while we're here. So thank you for being on this call once again. We should not be bleeding for seven days. And that's something that we got taught to be normal and it's not. It is not normal at all. Seven days of blood should not be happening. So we're going to reverse this. We're going to start reversing these things. Um, toxic foods and unnatural lifestyle are the main reason that your periods are the way they are, okay? So dairy, I wanna get into dairy. I want you guys to think about it like this. On our periods specifically, I tended to notice that a lot of us crave dairy items, dairy products, and dairy, think of it like this. It's an animal's milk. It's the mother's milk, y'all. We got our own milk. It's funny, because to a sense, we're even craving ourselves. It's an aspect of ourselves, but the milk is very mommy. It's very comforting. This can even go into trauma with your mom like that like it's mothering it's very nurturing it's very comforting this is why ice cream and cheese and milk and all these dairy products are so comforting we want that when we're menstruating okay these are the things that are causing your periods to be seven days when i actually cut off dairy when i cut off meat when i cut off these things my periods like i said they got to two days and they weren't painful i wasn't bleeding like this anymore i wasn't and you have to even think about it within meat Think about how much blood is in meat. And to each its own. I'm not here to tell anybody to change their diet. You know, we're all on our own journey. We're all on our own experience. I can only reflect mine onto you and tell me what has worked for me and hope that you follow the same or, or choose a path similar because we can all get to the path. So meat, when you eat meat, it's just, it's full of so much blood, okay? This is why your periods are so heavy. Tell, tell signs. Birth control, y'all. This is something so many goddesses get given at such a young age with no awareness. And most of the times our mothers lack this awareness as well. Our mothers may have been on the birth control or, or themselves. So we have hormone e disruptors, right? Our hormones are all over the place, which is why we're going into the doctor's office. The first thing that needs to be um, offered is lifestyle advice, lifestyle change. Our lifestyle is what created in the first place. So our lifestyle is the very thing to heal it. You have to go to the root cause of the problem. You have to. You can't put a band-aid over it. You can't. So birth control is given to us goddesses anytime we go to the doctor. It's like it's prescribed like this. I got put on birth control when I was 13, y'all. 13. And this changes your hormones. So this literally changes the attraction that you have to men. You're attracted to a whole different audience when you're on birth control. You have a whole different period. That's not your own natural cycle. Because the hormones are, are, are birth control. If you are on birth control, this is the number one thing that needs to be stopped. You need to get in control of your own hormones, okay? Your own hormones. Because all it's doing, like I said, it's suppressing your body from making its own. So it takes time to rebalance. A straight endocrine disruptor. This is what this is. A straight endocrine disruptor. Your endocrine system is made up of the glands that make the hormones. You see how this all connects, right? And that's a great comment that I see. Um, we are supposed to be breastfeeding goddesses. Like, we need to know. My dog wanted his presence to be known on this call, y'all. He just wanted to connect, but we had to shut that down. So, um, back to what I was saying. Yeah, uh, when us goddesses are having babies, we need to be giving that milk. Formula is a no-no. Formula is full of toxins and chemicals. And once again, so the brain state that babies are in from zero to seven is very much meditative it's very much hypnosis and they are we are all connected to source but they are very much connected to source very intimately and very closely because like i said they're babies they just came right so this is why there's so much target towards the ages zero to seven in religions in churches in schools and daycares and the books all these things okay all of these thing um the recording will be posted on the youtube channel i'm getting ready to create after this I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna connect with you guys after and let you know how you can work with me um if you are looking for further guidance and one-on-one -on -one coaching and assistance if you're looking for guidance in natural products all these things i will be able to give you guys at the end so just stay tuned okay so yeah breastfeeding y'all 
leave that formula for the freaks. For the freaks. All right. <laughs> trauma. Trauma. This is something that we all face and struggle and deal with at some point in our life. Y'all, let me know. I'm sorry. I keep saying this. This is the last I'm going to ask. Is that too loud for y'all? Because I don't want that to be something that bothers y'all in the replay. Um, Trauma. So trauma is held in the womb. All trauma is held in the womb. So especially at younger ages, right? When our brains are going through so much, when there's so much happening and it's very traumatic, we have to store it somewhere because it can't sit in here or we wouldn't be able to function on a day-to-day basis. So all our trauma literally goes to our wounds, okay? All of it. So one of the main questions that I get is, does this still apply for a woman who have had hysterectomy? Hysterectomy is when you get your uterus removed. And this answer is yes. 100% yes. Because you taking the physical um, uterus away, you know, out of the womb doesn't change the fact that the energy still lies there. And the energy, once again, is what got us to be in this position in the first place. Everything's energy in the end of the day. So what energy are we putting into ourselves? What energy are we getting out? All right. Direct reflection. Hysterectomies are something that are being pushed onto women at the age of 20. Before they've even had the full grasp of even deciding if they want to have children or not. If they want to have babies. This is ridiculous, y'all. You go into the doctor and they are saying that, yeah, you need to get a hysterectomy because you have fibroids and that's the only way to remove them. This is the biggest scam ever. And on a deeper level, they're doing things with our wombs, y'all. They're energy harvesting with our wombs, doing some very sick activities. I'm not going to get into this because I'm not even going to shed light and give energy to it. It doesn't deserve it. But our wombs are trying to be taken from us. And this is why we need to tap into this knowledge and this information, because I don't want you guys to be in a position where you are experiencing fibroids. You are experiencing endometriosis. And the doctor is telling you, you have to get surgery. And our trust is put in these doctors through our programming because they go they go through years of school and they get degrees and all these things and we, we trust in them because we think they have our best interest. And doctors, majority of the time, have our best interest, which is why they even put all their time and dedication and energy into going to school to learn about these things. It's not their fault that they have been given misguiding and misleading information, okay? The doctors aren't even always aware of what they are doing to us. So, hysterectomies are not needed. I don't care what the doctor says, they're not needed, ever. We are born with a womb for a reason. Our womb is to stay with us, okay? It gets me angry talking about it because there's no reason 20-year-olds should be getting their wombs taken from them at all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And for the goddesses that are watching, if you have your womb taken from you, it's okay. Like, it's okay. Because guess what? You can still do all of this. The energy is still there and it would never be taken from you. This healing and this work, it still applies to you just as much as if you didn't have one. Okay? No matter, like like Robbie said, it doesn't matter if it's not in the physical. Energy can never disappear. Your womb is with you. Right here, okay? Right here. So, wounds are held in the womb. How can you tell? All right? So, <clears throat> like I said earlier, if you are in bitch mode, okay? straight bitch mode you are in competition you are mad at the world you are you are y'all know what a bitch is like and i don't even like using that word because it's so like disrespectful and so um low vibrational i don't really like that word to be honest so i don't think i'm gonna use it again but uh right now it's being used and when you're in straight bitch mode this is just a telltale sign that you got wounds in your womb all right you're mad at the world why are we mad at the world you know you you putting guards up trying to protect your heart I've been broke so many times. I like, like, nah, we're not, we, we expressing this, we expressing this love. Like we, we radiating this love. We, our hearts aren't meant to be on, on cold, on, on lockdown. Like we need to turn that wrong way. Oh. And, um, so <laughs> that was my favorite person when I was depressed. Um, so wounds are held in the womb. You can tell if you're experiencing depression. You can tell if you're feeling dis- disconnection. You can just tell if you have those mother and father wounds, y'all. If you have not been able to make full compassion for your parents, that's in your womb. And I'm going to get deeper into this um, in a second. But us goddesses, those mother wounds are deeper than you think. Our mothers for the gods and the goddesses, there's no deeper and stronger connection than the one that we have with them. It is all respect to them. And I 